You'd think that Tony Stark would be happy that he helped save the world from the Chitauri, but something about him is different now. He spends most of his time building new Iron Man suits at his mansion and has somehow managed to get himself in trouble with this mysterious menace known as the Mandarin. I'd like to think he knows what he's doing, but, well, he's Tony. You see that lovely Malibu penthouse? Well, that's where I live with Tony Stark. Normally, it has a beautiful vista of the Pacific, but today, it has a fleet of gunships hired by the Mandarin to redecorate our lounge. He's the same villain that's been creating all kinds of chaos around town, even putting our friend Happy in the hospital. Guess he's not so happy now. Definitely not Tony's best decision giving our home address to a bunch of lava-blooded villains. On a positive note, at least his new Iron Man suit fits me snugly. Get her, I'm gonna find a way around. Tony! You, you're okay, right? We need to get you out of here right now. See, this is why I don't like it when you bring your work home with you.
For a second, we thought it was over, but a final missile slipped past. I watched in horror as the entire condo sunk into the abyss. Thankfully, Jarvis had managed to help Tony escape a watery end, but the suit had shorted out, leaving him stranded in Tennessee. Further adding to his troubles, the hot-headed villains happened to be visiting the area, and Tony's only ally was Harley, a local boy with a pretty mean potato gun. The pair were left with no choice but to take on the Flameheads together. Tony really should start keeping the rest of the Avengers on speed dial. Whoa, that was so cool! I, I mean, you know, in, in a bad way. Shouldn't be too much of a problem. There are Transformers around here that'll shut the power off. I accidentally did that. <laughs> Twice. <clears throat> Transformer up here. Let's smash it and go. <laughs> All right, that's one of them taken care of. Now to find the other one. That did it. The power's off. We can get past now, right?
Ha! Oh man, she looks angry. Like, really angry. How is she even glowing like that? Hot wings, you want party? Come on, you and me, let's go. You got a plan for this, right? It kind of feels like we're a little outmatched right now. some creative use of a microwave, Tony defeated the remaining extremis-fueled agents and headed off to take down the Mandarin. Then, things got complicated very quickly. The Mandarin turned out to be a washed-up British actor called Trevor, and the real villain was actually someone familiar. Not an ex-neighbor, but a nerd turned superhuman called Aldrich Killian. I've got to admit, he was looking much more suave these days. Killian only went and took me hostage, exposing me to extremis. He also kidnapped the president, too, and planned to serve him up like a roast turkey. Tony turned up to save the day, this time with Iron Patriot by his side and his entire back catalog of Iron Man suits. The ten-year-old with the potato gun would have come too, but he had to tidy his room.
You wanted the Mandarin, Tony? Well, here I am. I am the Mandarin. Don't you? You're only delaying the inevitable, Tony. Perhaps this will teach you to be nicer to people you randomly meet at parties. I'm not afraid of you. I know you're a coward. Do me a favor and blow Mark 42. No! Even after being cooked in an Iron Man suit, Killian was still up for another round. Luckily for Tony, I was in no mood for any more nonsense. Combining my terrifically toasty powers and an Iron Man repulsor, I flame-grilled the big geek. With that maniac out of the way, Tony celebrated by blowing up all his suits, promising to spend the holidays with me rather than with a screwdriver and an arc reactor. With the president now safe and sound, Tony promised to use his super genius to find a cure for the extremis enhancements. Straight after we'd had a festive dinner. Oh, and after he'd had his shrapnel removed. Oh, and don't forget, he is Iron Man.